Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, July 6, 2022 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Stockheim, Germany. About five years ago, the WannaCry and Not Petia worms caused quite a bit of havoc taking advantage of the Eternal Blue exploit. So Jan took the opportunity uh, to take a look at Shodan data to see how such a highly publicized and dangerous uh, vulnerability has been patched over the last five years. Well, it turns out, yeah, it has been patched, but far from perfect. Now at its peak, um, Shodan counted 35,000 vulnerable systems. These days there are about uh, 5,000 or actually exactly 5,565 as Jan points out vulnerable machines left again according to Shodan. But remember one way how some of these worms really caused the damage was by entering a network and then spreading internally and of course uh, Shodan typically does not detect these internal vulnerable hosts. Other interesting thing about uh, six months ago the number was at 10,000 and actually remained uh, sort of constant uh, if you're looking at the 12 month and six month number. But overall, this matches what we have seen all the way back uh, to vulnerabilities like the uh, Code Red and Nimda vulnerabilities and the worms that were associated with it. That there is an initial relatively fast drop in vulnerable systems. Those are systems that are being patched usually within a month or so. And then there is this long tail that pretty much lasts forever. Ever. And at this point, once you sort of discount honeypots and the like, uh, systems vulnerable to these particular issues are probably never really patched, but just decommissioned. And then we got an interesting update to open SSL. It actually fixes uh, two different vulnerabilities. Uh, one is rated high in severity. It is a vulnerability that I mentioned, uh, I think, last week, and it only got introduced in the last version of OpenSL 304 released about uh, two weeks ago and only affects x86-64 CPUs that support the AVX 512 IFMA uh, instruction set. Tricky part here is that yes, this affects actually a quite a good number of systems, but uh, OpenSSL, when you compiled, actually failed some tests on those systems. And partially as a result of that, uh, this version of OpenSSL didn't really make it into any major uh, releases. So needless to say, well, uh, you probably should apply this patch as it becomes available for your platform. Nothing really to be overly worried about. The second vulnerability, it's only rated moderate, but it's actually a kind of uh, interesting AS in OCB mode for 32-bit x86 platforms. And uh, with the ASNI assembly optimized implementation and as ASNI is a uh, very standard, lots of uh, Intel CPUs uh, are supporting this uh, for a few years back now. Well, uh, they may not actually encrypt all of the data. Up to 16 bytes of plain text data uh, may be revealed that way under certain uh, conditions. Again, it's only rated moderate and they're quite a bit of sort of caveats around this, when this will happen, when this will not happen. It does affect a larger range of OpenSL versions. Also OpenSL 1.1.1 is affected from this particular vulnerability. So like I said, the, once the OpenSL packages are released for the platform of your choice, just update them. No real need to sort of super rush anything here. And then yes, uh, we do have still some malicious NPM packages uh, to talk about. The latest set uh, comes uh, thanks uh, to work done by uh, Reversing Labs and a blog post by Carlo Sanki is actually summarizing what they found. They found that attackers are in particular or had been in particular focusing on packages uh, published by Ionic and one 
fake package that was particular popular here was icon package. This package was downloaded a total of about 7,000 times. The screenshot they have here from GitHub shows 734 uh, downloads this last week. This package, when installed, uh, will inject JavaScript into pages that essentially implement keystroke loggers. And uh, then they also do this uh, additional trick where uh, they are impersonating uh, the uh, correct Ionic uh, web page. So uh, the Ionic uh, web page itself uses the domain name ionic.io and now the Fake one is ionicio.com and they even copied the content from the official ionic.io webpage. So in short, they did do a little bit more work than most attackers are bothering with. And of course, in doing so, they apparently were also somewhat successful. Well, and that's it for uh, today. I will do another podcast for Thursday, but there will be no Friday podcast again because of travel and 4th of July week usually is a little bit lighter on news. Anyway, thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.